Hello, I'm the 10-minute English teacher. Let's get you exam ready. Today we're thinking about analysing poems that we're seeing for the first time. All you need is a piece of paper and a pen. Before we get going, don't forget to like and subscribe. There are plenty of things to help you with your studies for English literature on the channel. Okay, so how to analyse unseen poetry. So firstly, let's think about how we analyse a poem that we're looking at for the first time. The first thing we need to do is identify and explain what the key themes in the poem are and how we're made to feel about them, whether that's positively or negatively. And when we've done that, we need to identify the structural choices made by the poet and why they fit the poem and the themes explored in it. So if it rhymes, maybe that reflects the order that love has brought to um, the speaker in the poem. And if it doesn't, and there's no real order to the poem, maybe it might be reflecting the chaos that can be caused by war or conflict. So we think a little bit about why the structure has been chosen and then we move on to analysing the language of the poem, choosing those key significant moments, those quotations, and then considering what's communicated by things like metaphors and images in the poem. Before we move on, if you're a Pearson Edexcel candidate, you will know that in your exam for English literature, you have to compare an unseen poem A with a poem unseen poem B. If you're an AQA candidate, you write a, an analysis of an unseen poem, poem A, and then you compare poem A with another one, poem B. Today, we're going to be thinking about writing about one poem um, and how we're going to structure that response in very much the, the first part of the AQA um, section um, in mind. But this is definitely something that will support you if you're a Pearson candidate too. And of course, we're going to be using a poem that you may have seen before if you are a Pearson candidate. So today's question in the AQA style, we've got how is conflict presented in The Man He Killed by Thomas Hardy. So we're in the exam now and it's the first five minutes. What we're going to do is just spend some time reading that very carefully and thinking about the meanings in it and, and possibly underlining some of those key quotations. So a reading from me. Had he and I but met by some old ancient inn, we should have sat us down to wet right many a nipperkin. But ranged as infantry and staring face to face, I shot at him as he at me and killed him in his place. I shot him dead because... Because he was my foe, just so my foe, of course he was, that's clear enough although. I shot him dead because because he was my foe, just just so my foe, of course he was, that's clear enough although. He thought he'd list perhaps, off and light, just as me. Was out of work, had sold his traps, no other reason why. Yet quaint and curious war is, you shoot a fellow down, you treat if met where any bar is or help to half a crown. So that's the poem and um, the first thing that we've done is we've read it and then we need to start thinking about the uses of language and maybe underlining some that we might rely on for the um for our written response so i've underlined these um today there are more of course every line has got its own significance but i've gone for the very opening of the poem had he and i but met by some old ancient inn so we've chosen that image rather than battle it's a poem about war but instead of starting with an image of battle we've got a social situation right at the beginning to create a very different mood and tone We've got, I shot him dead because, because he was my foe. There's, there's a bit of uncertainty here, there's, it's, and that's reflected by the repetition of because and the use of the dash. The, the very um, almost nursery-like, nursery rhyme-like tone has changed here, so I've gone for that. And we've got a bit of on Jean Mont here. There's, that's clear enough, although he thought he'd list perhaps. And, and this soldier isn't named throughout um, the, the poem, and that makes it, universal in many ways and we've got quaint and curious war is it's a quite an interesting um, statement about war and that might be something that we challenge later on so I've started by reading the poem getting my head around it a little bit um, it's a poem about how ridiculous war is and it imagines being a friend with somebody in one life and their enemy in another and just how um, how, how strange those circumstances can be um, and those are the quotes that I've underlined to, to take forward so now over to you. So paragraph one, you're going to introduce themes and what the poem's about. And in this paragraph, we're not going to use any quotes. So this is what we're going to need to do. So the first thing, easy, simple sentence, the poem's about war and conflict. And then what you're going to need to do is explain what the speaker talks about, what ideas, but only in a sentence, one or two sentences, no, no more than that, just be concise. And then explain why the poem makes war seem absurd. So this is my opening paragraph. It might be five or six sentences, but no longer than that. You've got five minutes to write that down. And then when you, your time is up, you'll hear from me.
Okay, you've had your time. Let's move on to thinking about paragraph two. Okay, paragraph two, you're going to analyse the structure of the poem. So this is how we're going to do that. So I've given you a couple of ideas that you can write about. So there's an A-B-A-B rhyme scheme. Why do you think Hardy might have opted for this? It is about one person and another in opposition with each other in conflict. So you can explore that idea perhaps, but you might have your own reasons for um, thinking that Hardy... Your own reasons for for, um, for the rhyme scheme, according to Hardy. So you're welcome to come up with your own interpretation. When you've done that, the next thing you need to do is think about the use of the meter. So we've got iambic meter. It's mostly trimeter. And we've got quatrain stanzas that are four lines long throughout the poem. And it sort of reflects the structure and rhythm of a nursery rhyme. Why do you think Hardy might have chosen to structure his poem this way? Come up with your own idea for that. But that's something that's evident when we think about the structure. You're going to have five minutes to explore the structure in your second paragraph. You'll hear from me when that time is up.
Okay, you've had enough time now writing about the structure. We're going to move on to thinking about the language of the text. So you're going to analyse the key quotes and there are three of them there. So in the time that we've got left, we're going to try and analyse these three and think about the, the meanings or the significance of these moments. So we're going to start with a point that I'm going to give to you. So we've got Hardy chooses not to introduce the theme of war at the very beginning of the poem. And here's my evidence for that. Had he and I but met by some old ancient inn. So we've got this image of an ancient inn right at the beginning. And here are some questions to help you along. Why do you think he hasn't named his subject? And why has he foregrounded the image of the old ancient inn instead of battle why is it that we've got this image at the beginning of the poem rather than war which is what the poem is about when you've done that the next thing you need to do is think about um, how the tone changes midway through the poem and uncertainty begins to creep in and we've got this example of a quote there i shot him dead because because he was my foe and I want you to think about why Hardy opts for a dash to provide a pause here and why is there a repeated use of because. So think about the effect of that. And then I'm leaving you with that um, that phrase about war, quaint and curious. Why this exclamation um, towards the end of the poem? What, what, um, what does this tell us about Hardy's sentiments and his ideas about war? And do you think that these adjectives are, are strong enough? Okay, so feel free to pause here. And, um, and attempt that. You should give yourself about 15 minutes to take on this part of your um, response. So we've analysed the, um, the themes and talked about how they've been presented. We've talked about the structure and then this is where we show that, that real good in-depth understanding of the meanings of the poem. So give yourself about 15 minutes um, before hearing from me to end the tutorial. Okay, some op optional extras if you want to take yourself um, and your revision further. Find another poem about war, death, love, relationships or nature and use my method to analyse it, that three-part method, to write your own response to it. And check out my other tutorials exploring how to analyse a poem you're reading for the first time. OK, check out the other videos on my channel. I'll continue to add content. Feel free to ask for something you'd like to see me cover in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share and keep revising.